it's been, what, about eight hours since this game ended. And I'm only just recording this now because I can't get my head around it. I, I just can't believe that West Ham's through to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. I felt so many euphoric emotions at full time. Everything just burst out of me. And I could feel the energy and the other emotions coming from the fans in that sold-out stadium. And, you know, I've spent the last few hours thinking about how far this club's come and how we as fans deserve happiness like this and just how amazing this night was. It's one of the best nights of my life as a football fan. And I've seen a lot of things as a football fan. I've seen Doncaster's last-minute promotion away at Brentford. I've seen the last ever game at the bowling ground. I've seen um, the 3 3 draw against Spurs with Lanzini, just to name a few. This is up there. One of the best moments of my life supporting West Ham United and being a football fan in general. And I'm just. I'm just so proud. I'm just so, so, so proud of this football club. I say as me AirPod comes out. Uh, it's just. When David Moyes took over this club, it was one point above the relegation zone when he came back. And look where we are now. We're in the quarterfinals of a European competition and we're sixth in the Premier League. I want anyone out there, any fan, any club, to keep on doubting us. And we need new doubters. Do you know why? Because the next last people who doubted us ended up becoming people who followed us and appreciated us. And even some of them became our fans. So we need new doubters. And I want you people to keep doubting West Ham United Football Club. Because we'll just make you look damn well stupid when we accomplish something. Like we did on this night. I'm so, so proud of this club. I'm so proud of this manager and these players. And we never do anything easy. And this is the thing, West Ham, we never do anything easy. We always do it the hard way. We all, we are, but we like that challenge. It's the West Ham in us. We love that challenge of being the underdogs. We love being written off. Because we always have a point to prove. And whoever we get in the next round of this competition, we're ready for them. We don't fear anyone. It's anything, they should fear us. They shouldn't just write us off. We are a difficult team to play against. And Sevilla, as well as Premier League teams, can certainly attest to that. It has finished. West Ham United 2, Sevilla 0 at the London Stadium. West Ham advances to the quarterfinals of the Europa League 2-1 on aggregate. Amazing night at the London Stadium. The, the London Stadium was at a 98% capacity. And recorded, West Ham recorded its highest ever home attendance in club history. But was it worth it? Yes, you bet it was. Absolutely a massive game of such huge magnitude and huge importance to these fans and these players. Of course everybody was going to want to have a piece of this action. I think that we pretty dominant all game. We didn't fear severe. If anything, Sevilla were in second gear for most of the game. We just took advantage of them when we had to. Yeah, we had a few spells when it was a bit rocky, but we never let our heads drop. We knew what was on the line. We knew what we had to do. We got it done. I'll start off with the team lineups as per usual. Ariola's back in goal because he usually is for these cup competitions anyway, in European competitions, and so more to the point. There was speculation that Antonio, Cresswell and Vlasic would not make the team. All three did, with Antonio and Cresswell starting and Vlasic on the bench. Maybe that was a tactic by David Moyes just to um, trick the opposition a little bit. Um, Rakitic was back fit for Sevilla, but Akuna was injured. Um, from the start of the game, West Ham just looked very good. We were first to every ball. We were playing in line to the ball, ball's flow. And we're able to keep the ball on the ground a lot. Hoofball against this kind of team does not work. 
they attempted it against us in the first leg, but it was just going to our fullbacks and it was resulting in a turnover of possession. Hoof ball was never going to work against this lot, so we did the right thing not to do that. Um, we just played it low. We played it close to our feet and our chests and were able to move it quickly into the opposition half without any major disruption. Um, we passed into very good vacant spaces. Lanzini's vision in this game for his passing was excellent. He was playing very deep-lying role. He knew who to pass to and how to run without losing the ball. And part of this was a psychological aspect from our midfield. They knew how to attack without taking it too far and losing the ball. So that was a good thing. Um, Rice just did what he does best, dispossessing and um, moving the ball into the opposition territory. Did that many times. Antonio was physical as well. He wasn't necessarily able to take a chance in the first 20 minutes, but he was physical. And he bullied Sevilla in the first leg. He was a bully to that team. And he was a bully in this game too. Uh, what I've also written down here is that after 20 minutes, I think it felt that Sevilla got a bit of a kick up in the game. And it resulted in a very game-defying moment, defining moment that ended up being crucial. Crucial in this game. I think it was Enesiri who took the shot. And Ariola made a wonder save. Wonderful save. He was quass on Oliver Kahn with that save. And yet West Ham's telling me they want to sign Sam Johnston. Mate, I've got to be honest with you about Sam Johnston. Just a little bit of a story before I carry on. Don't sign him, West Ham. Get Ariola, the World Cup winner who's won a bit of silverware in France. Okay. Don't get Sam Johnston who used to play for Doncaster Rovers. I know because I was a season seat there, as you guys know. He was the best goalkeeper I've seen for Doncaster. But I don't think he'll be West Ham material. We need to get Ariola signed up permanently. Because if we don't, that is absolute crime against football. And David Sullivan should go on trial for that. Uh, Sevilla, man, that was an excellent chance for them. And, and Ariola did well to deny it. Um, Jules Koundé... Also struck from distance, but didn't test Ariola too much. Sevilla started to push back a little bit because they felt threatened. And the only way they could deal with the West Ham pressure was to push back en masse and within large numbers. And it was their way of controlling it. At the same time, they made themselves vulnerable because they had no one going forward as well. Ben Rama, who I thought, by the way, had one of his best games for West Ham in a long, long time. And he's an absolute beast in Europe. Do you know what I'm saying? He is an absolute dynamite TNT things going on with him in Europe. And he had a lovely through ball to Antonio, who was close. Antonio needed to put more power on the shot when he was getting it past the keeper because it did go past the keeper, but it was parried and then Suchek couldn't get on the follow-up. Antonio should have struck that harder when he had the chance. Lanzini, all, like I said, was good, but there were times in that half when he was a bit too eager and ended up fouling players. He got yellow carded. Four now has impressed me, and let me tell you why. Because I mentioned in a previous video, everyone's trying to work out what his role is in the team. As a midfielder, he was good because he was then able to go onto the wing in preparation to get across. And this did not help Sevilla out because you had Johnson and Four Niles there. You could, they couldn't predict who the ball would go to, but you also had options on the other side of the field. And it was these mind games. It was a bit of a psychological win, this, if you think about it. West Ham wanted to play mind games by trying to trick the Sevilla players into thinking the ball was going one way when it went the other. Uh, ben Rama found Antonio. Antonio could have taken a shot, but he was under a bit of pressure. So he put in a left foot across to Suchek. Suchek got his head on the ball, curled it into the net. 1-0 West Ham, 1-1 in aggregate. Suchek had a blinding first half and he deserved that goal. Now, the last goal he scored was on his 27th birthday in the 1-0 win against Wolves. He scored another important goal in this game. Moyes was off, was off on one, jumping up and down as well. The fans were on the feet and the players went and hugged the fans to celebrate. He deserved that goal because of a bright showing. After that, I didn't want to lie too deep because that way we, we, we wouldn't be able to cope if they passed the ball and we'd be tracking back to them. We'd be, we'd be behind them always. 
But it was 1-1 in aggregate going into half-time, and I just wanted more of the same in the second half. And when the second half rolled around, I did nearly get more of the same to start off with. Suchek forced a save from their goalkeeper, and Rice went wide. Suchek could have had a brace easily, and that would have killed off the game there and then. Sevilla moved the ball, but they couldn't look too composed. Martial and Nassiri couldn't hit the target. Everybody was saying they wanted Martial. Jury's still out on him, even in the Liga. And, and Nassiri, I'm sort of glad after what I saw... I am sort of glad West Ham did not sign him. Because although he's got crossing ability, his finishing was absolutely, for lack of a better word, piss poor. It really was. He was off target by miles. He wasn't composed enough, like I said. Rakitic came off and on came Oliver Torres. The man cannot cross to save his life. Oliver Torres cannot even cross a road. Goes back to the old joke. Why did Oliver Torres cross the road? Psyche didn't. <laughs> got you out there. But anyway, our ball control was so close because we wanted to avoid a, lot, a loss of possession. Losing possession hadn't been costly for us in this game. And even when Sevilla went the other way, I didn't, feel too, I didn't feel too intimidated by them. Of course, they had some good players, but their forward line was absolutely poor. Had nothing to show for. Our forward line was amazing. And it was dominant. Lanzini was denied, but he didn't ever got a follow-up in. Ben Rama had the energy to cut in to the box and have a few chances. He made good use uh, applying some um, testing runs and really giving it to the opposition. Shortly after, he had a chance curled at goal, which was saved. Ben Rama came off and on came Andrei Malenko, who a lot of people predicted would score winning goal. Even Fake Carlton went on Twitter and said that if Yarmolenko scored... Fake Carton would enroll into the Ukrainian army and go on the front line. I was nearly going to spoil it and foreshadow something that I, I, I can't even mention that because if I do, I was going to spoil it. But anyway, it went into extra time because of the aggregate scoreline. And thank the Lord and thank all of the footballing gods. There's no away goals rule. So, we were good. Extra time, it was 1-1 in aggregate, so all West Ham had to do was score one more goal and hope Sevilla didn't score another goal. And then... But if you work out the maths, West Ham would have gone through in a 2-1 aggregate. And this three came off for Rafa Mir, the Wolves reject. And um, Jesus Corona came off for Munir El Hadidi, the guy who scored the goal in the first leg. So when Hadidi came on, I was worried a little bit. Because I thought, is he going to do it again? There was a corner from Four Nals, and this was so close. Cross came in, Dawson headed, Suchek was just wide. He got it on the wrong side of his head. I think he got it onto like, um, if you look at my screen, this side of his head when he should have got it onto here. If he'd have got it, contacted it right there, it would have had more chance of going in, but it's just the wrong angle by inches. Martial came off and he was booed when he came off. Cruz came on for him instead. Jesus Navas came off. Gonzalo Montiel came on. Montiel's a player I would have wanted at West Ham for the record. He's a good friend of Manuel Lanzini. They have that River Plate connection. Fornals took a shot from outside of the box. Because Antonio, I think, was the player that whipped it to him. Fornals took a shot from outside the box. Parried. Who's waiting on the door? Who would it have to be? Who did you want it to be? Andre Yarmolenko. To tap it in, 2-1 to West Ham. The place erupted. After everything Yarmolenko has been through right now... Um... He deserves everything right now. He deserves everything positive. And his contract's up at the end of the season. If he does leave, I think we'll all shake his hand and we'll say thank you because you scored two important goals in back-to-back -back games. You scored an important goal against Aston Villa and you scored an important goal to get West Ham through. And that's why we should be grateful to him because he's got us that goal and he was emotional again when he scored. I really was happy for him when he scored that. And you know, with the run of form that he's now coming into, why doesn't he start a game? I would look into it. Him starting a game, maybe. At this point, where it was 2-0 to West Ham. It was 2-0 to West Ham, so I'm a little bit tired. It's late at night here in Canada. We just needed to, not necessarily time waste, but just manage the game wisely. Made some substitutions. Noble was on for Lanzini. Diop was on for Fornals. Diop seems to just come on just to keep the game at the same score it is. 
and Fredericks came on for Antonio. Sevilla lost the game, much to everyone's shock. Sevilla had nothing more to give, and when full-time whistle rang, the celebrations came out. The cheering, the hugs, it just showed the power of football, how everybody just joined together. West Ham fans just joined together and embraced this. Because we've been through some dark times. Maybe people are going through dark times. People I've seen on Twitter have lost dads and mums and sons over the last few weeks. They could rejoice and celebrate something today and, sh and absolutely embrace each other. This is the power of football. It makes us all happy. And we all share the rewards of something. West Ham fans shared the rewards of this monumental win from a monumental effort by the players. Sevilla failed the Declan Rice test. Sevilla failed the Ben Johnson test. Sevilla had not lost to an English team in a European competition until that night at the London Stadium. This game had a lot of individuals for West Ham who really stepped up to the mark. Ben Rama and Suchek had some of their best games in many months. They were phenomenal. Declan Rice, need I say more? Ben Johnson, I thought, was really good. Fornals, excellent. Excellent in his interchange in between the midfield and the wing. Ariola pulled off a save that kept us in it. And if we don't sign him now, I don't want to live on this planet. I'll just go and book a hotel on Mars or something and just set up Wi-Fi. Like, I'll do like, you know, Matt Damon things, you know, Martian and all that. Because I won't want to live in this world if, if Ariola don't sign after today. But anyway, you know what happened today, right? The pain to the team in Spain was caused by Ukraine. Ian. That was actually really clever from me. What, well, I just tripped myself out there. I've got, I've, I've got bars. Seriously, like, I, I've just... I want to try and fill, fill up something like that. So, the pain to the team in Spain caused by Ukraine. Nian. Yeah. Check it. Embarrassing. <laughs> um, Yarmolenko, his childhood stadium, Desna FC, the place where he played as a teenager, was bombed by Russian armed forces during this conflict. He probably know that it's taken a mental toll on him, knowing that a big part of his childhood has been destroyed. And I think what it is with him, he's now grateful to be playing this sport because he's got friends in Ukraine who can't do that right now. Some of them are even fighting on the front line. And he's just grateful to play this sport. It's pure emotion, pure passion, and amazing atmosphere. You look at those atmospheres where they have pyrotechnics in Eastern Europe, like Serbia and Fenerbahce in Turkey. Or you look at places like um, Poland what they do at those games. That's what I want to see at the bowl a lot, lot more. My God, goodness. We complained that the bowl had a bad atmosphere, but it was up to us fans to make it like a home, to make it electric. And boy, did we do that. And I think the atmosphere was a big part of why we won the game tonight because we, the fans were the 12th man and got behind those players from start to finish. I'm going to remember this day for a very long time. And I hope you West Ham fans do too. For Sevilla fans, all I can say to you guys is good luck for the rest of your season in La Liga. You're doing really well. You've got a great manager in Spanish football. You've got great players. You've got a really lovely city from what the West Ham fans who went to the game last week told me. And you've got a lot of grace and decorum for West Ham fans. I didn't just copy that from Come Dine With Me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, really good win for us. Roll on the next round. I hope we get at Barcelona, because if we do, we're coming for you lot. And I mean that. You Barca lot, you better be ready if we draw you. Do not underestimate West Ham United Football Club. Let's just keep this dream alive. Thank you very much for watching this aftermath. If you like this video, hit that like button. And don't forget to sub for more content. Take care, everybody. Enjoy this, and I will be seeing you all soon. I'm off to bed.